What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. A little late video, a little late. Um, just had to get some rest and some uh, things done around here. And been thinking about some stuff, going through a lot of your guys' comments on the last uh, real quick video I did. That was just me messing around. Well, I wouldn't say messing around, but trying to learn how to do a little bit different things in videos and such like that there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Also appreciate people letting me know you guys get the alerts on the uh, previous video of that. Because I just try to figure out, you know, if there's something I'm doing wrong or not onto it. But might just been a glitch on some of them videos with it getting pushed out. But on to some of the talks today. Lots of stuff going around in the hobby. Um, before I start, I want to say congrats to Crispy Cracker. You are the winner of Week 1's Gridiron Games. That prize was sponsored by the Bullpen, a.k.a. CBC, a.k.a. Joey. If you go to his channel, the Bullpen, I'll link it. He has a way for you to get in contact with him so you can claim that prize. Please make sure you use the email that you, when you email him, use the email that you used on Gridiron because that's how I'm going to verify it, that it's you, pretty much. But I, I pretty much can tell if it'll be you or not. You, you'll understand what I'm saying because of the email. But let's move on from Gridiron Games. Don't forget, get your stuff in. Thursday night game, Chargers Chiefs. That should be a fun game to watch. All right, everybody. Let's move on to this weekend. Derby City Card Show. I will be set up there. I was messing around again, trying to learn how to make cool, I don't know, thumbnails and pictures and stuff. So that's just me playing around again. Uh, trying to get better at doing some of this stuff. I guess I'm going to need some different programs, stuff like that. But in due time, due time. You guys might get a little bit fancier pictures and stuff out there one day. But if you're around a Louisville area this Saturday, I will be there. I am bringing one, two, three of those 50 cent boxes and two, uh, two, well, I guess you could say four total rows of dollar boxes. Lots of stuff to go through, plus the regular cards I normally bring will be in the display cases. So make sure you guys stop by if you're around that area. I think it starts at 8 a.m. I know I'll be there around 7 a.m. setting up. And it usually goes to about two-ish, but we'll see because we got college football going on. A lot of people start getting out of there early. Let's talk about the National Sports Collectors Convention. They did confirm dates here about a week or so ago. And I'm just going to go through them. 2023, we're back in Chicago with it. I should be there for this one, July 26th to July 30th. I think I'm going to end up getting a Airbnb. More to follow that beginning of next year. Um, I just got to line some things up with it. And I think I'm going to try to get about four or five people together that, you know, we're not going to party hardy and have, um, what's the old tech uh, term, uh, hookers and blow or whatever it is kind of parties going on. I, mean, I don't care if you're drinking stuff, but, you know, uh, just to where we could come back, crash between, you know, going to the show, we could Uber to it, uh, taxi to it. You know, because if you want to drive to the Uber house type deal, you can. You can fly in, Uber out to it. Just something that's, you know, out there. And I think I can get it down to where we're pretty much paying less than a hotel price per day. I think I can get it to about $80 to $100 when we get about five of us into it. But more to follow on that coming up next year. 2024, back in Cleveland. Dates are set July 24th to the 28th. Ah. Uh, I've been up there before. It's just not one of the venues I would want to go to offhand. I may skip that year. Back to 2025, we're back in Chicago again, July 30th through August 3rd. I know that's way out there, but we'll see how the Airbnb goes this next year coming up for it. Maybe we can just carry it forward to each of them. Maybe I will go to Cleveland if you guys want. We'll see how that goes. But they have pushed out those three dates out there, so we do know... Atlantic City, not on the venue, thankfully. Maybe they got something right finally. No more Atlantic City. That, that's just a horrible venue. All right. Another, now, this was also provided. I don't know if I said the last one from Sports Collectors Daily. They put a lot of different information out. You guys see it says Aaron Judge autograph cards all rising in value. Article came out today by Brandon Cross. Uh, when you look at it, it talks about... Where to go? I, I just had to scroll up onto it, my bad. About the first Bowman rookie auto. Now, everybody remembers the prices before he came up, and I didn't really realize that uh, Judge is turning, or he is 30 years old, according to this article. Yeah, the 30 year old. I can't believe it. 
I mean, 2013, you start thinking as you get, like for me, when you hit 40, it's over. When you start creeping in your mid to late 40s, you're like, wow, that dude's already 30 years old. Where is time gone? But prices went up and everything like that. But it, they talk about it's September 21, a base auto sold for 340 Then it says a one year and a lot of home runs later, that same card sold for 1300 Big jump because all the home runs and stuff, you know, the hype behind it. But the PSA 10s are bringing four to five grand. Still really, really good money from when I remember those things uh, being around $1,000 a piece. Not bad at all. Uh, talks about a black refractor, number 35 grade 95, sold for $2,200. That pales in comparison to the one that sold in July for $15,000. So it, it's a really interesting article talking about a lot of the different prices onto the cards uh, last year to this year. I know we've been hitting up a lot about cards going down and everything on the different pieces onto it. So a lot different. Um, what I found on here, and I wish I should have pulled this up to show you guys, Topps Chrome. I ended up pulling the X-Fractor Auto of that card. I got a quad 9.5 on it. Took me two times. I don't know if I've talked about that recently. First time it came back with like these weird subgrades, and it was a 9. It had like, I want to say my subgrades were like 10, 9, 5, 9, and a 9. So I cracked it, resubmitted, quad 9.5. It just shows how subjective grading really is. So I was looking at, and I, you know, I was like a PSA 9 autoed once because uh, these were numbered to 20. Sold for 800 last December while the same one sold as a 9.5 uh, for Beckett at $6,000 in August. I was like, man, that would be one of the few cards I, you know, regret selling. But I think at that time frame I got 1200 for it, 12 or 13 yeah, 12 or 1300 for it. So, I mean, I, I did well back then on to it. I was in the break for like 60 bucks. I think I spent 30 to grade it back then, maybe 20. I don't even remember. That stuff was cheap grading back then. But it's a really good article when you look through it because uh, it, it touches on to the agent stuff. It talks about, you know, uh, free agency, where stuff could go with him and everything. But it's one of the few cards I could say that's newer that, you know, has really steadily started going up this year. There's not a lot onto it. You know, if you start looking at like 17, 18, 19 stuff, I mean, he has the eye on screen back up, but he took a huge dip. Stuff like that there. But really, really good article. I'll pin it uh, in the description in case you guys want to see more onto it. But I liked how it was wrote. It brought up various different uh, things like the Bowman's Vest and stuff onto it just to show you the prices and how people or going after them due to the home run thing, in my own opinion, I should say, with the home run thing going on right now with them. All right, moving on. So I went through, uh, I was looking at a lot of the comments about the rumors the Fanatics buy in Panini. A lot of it is, I'm going to leave it as rumors, even though I know yeah, I did some information coming through that's pointing that this deal is supposed to be closed by the end of next month. Um, they were pushing for middle of the month. But things could fall through. So that's why I'm leaving it up as rumor on to until it's actually a done deal. And you guys seen that uh, probably like a minute video clip. I, beginning of the year when Tops was acquired by Fanatics, I said Panini will follow. And it's not a matter of if. It's when. It's just one of those things, you know. There's a lot of different stories out there. I know some have been talked about on YouTube about the printing facilities and everything else. He's having a hard time. But if you really look, what was it, about two years ago or a year ago? I can't remember. It's been a while. Because COVID all blends together for, for, uh, for me. But I remember the company being like evaluated for some crazy money, like two billion dollars, maybe more. It was a lot. Might even have been three billion. I just know it was multiple billion, but it was not like anything like twenty billion or anything like that. That company has to be evaluated probably less now. Would be my guess. I'm not sure. Uh it will definitely be something to see, though, with how that incorporates. I think a lot of it's going to be structured with 
keeping people in place in their jobs for X amount of time, you know, along with you know, what all rights are coming over with it, the products and all that. A lot has to be wrote up with the lawyers and agreed upon. But I, I really think, though, by the next month, we'll probably get that announcement they've acquired it. We'll start seeing some uh, other Panini football and basketball stuff coming out, probably on the release thing. I probably guess. Oh, end of November, beginning of December, because we were always shotgun blasted with uh, my distribution company with Panini. Even though stuff was on the calendar, I know stuff's not on the calendar now, but it would be out of the blue. It'd be like, how many cakes the Court Kings? I'm like, where did Court Kings come from? That used to be like a January, February release. No, now it's, you know, end of December, or beginning of December. And anybody that was a breaker back then will tell you, you know, and this is like going back like 15, 16, 17 time frame. From like middle of November to December, they just pushed product down our throats. It, it was immense. Stuff coming out every which way you had to get. It was, you know, end of their calendar year, end of their um, physical quarter, depending on how they did it. If they were in October through September, then... That was the beginning of their first quarter. If it was they're doing calendar year for the way they run their numbers, then that's the end of their calendar year. They're just pushing everything they can out, especially for tax purposes, because that runs by calendar year. But they, they pushed a lot out, and I can see, hopefully, that we'll see some newer product. I'm really hoping quality control comes into play on this. I have no idea what's going to happen with the redemption piece onto it. That'll be already in talks later. Uh, but what I'm more worried about is can we stop having every single player who ever donned a jersey or a pair of cleats or sneakers or whatever signing in this stuff? If we went back to where you were only getting two or three parallels per box and like one auto, there's nothing wrong with that. I can understand like NT stuff and Dynasty, you know, but I'm talking about like with Tops, Tops Chrome, Bowman. You know, we scale back some of that stuff to the way it used to be and make stuff more rare. It might help out a little bit better with the values. But just my thinking, you know, of how stuff was years ago versus now. And with the supply and demand, I mean, I got it. We're going to have a ton of base cards. But I'm just really hoping we, we eliminate a lot of those parallels. And by doing it, you just put less in the boxes for people. Because it's just killing value. I mean, how many different animal skins do we have by Panini? Elephant, snake, dragon, um, zebra, giraffe. I mean, then we had the uh, peacocks, tiger. I mean, we're running out of stuff out there, really. <laughs> well, you think we are, but you, there'll be something new every other time onto it. But I'm really hoping that that's controlled onto it. A lot of people have been speculating, too, you know, what this mean for the distribution companies? I think it means a lot. You're not going to get that product anymore. The one good thing that, you know, come out of this, hopefully, is that if you pre-order through Fanatics, you actually get your boxes on release day. As a breaker, even now, I can't tell you how many times that, like today, for example, Topps Chrome is supposed to ship out. Well, your distribution warehouse didn't get in yet. Well, how hard is it? You're selling the boxes at other warehouses right now to switch my order around and push me to another place. Oh, it takes time, and you got to send emails. Okay, got it. But even with the cases and stuff when I was breaking, stuff not showing up on time and everything, hopefully with this here, Fanatics does a better uh, job getting it to you on release day. Because I can't tell you how many breakers I knew and still know they're doing it. They still complain about that. We can't get product on release day. Hopefully that changes. You know, they give it out to you and, you know, maybe you get it a day early, but you're told, hey, if you're caught selling it, breaking it, opening it up early somehow, some way, you get, you know, a strike or you get banned from buying product. I think that'd be the greatest thing of all. Um, because they're... Panini used to do that to people opening up product early. I think you had to wait till 11 a.m. Eastern before you could open up Panini product on release day. And some people opened it a few minutes early. Boom. 
Now all of a sudden, you know, you I believe what had happened with a couple people was they weren't allowed to get their product in a timely fashion, or they might have been cut back. I can't remember the whole thing behind it, because this was years ago, probably five plus years ago, I remember onto it. But so much for questions, it needs to be answered. Am I a fan of them buying Panini? I don't like the point where I know a lot of you guys mentioned this as the word monopoly going on with it. I'm not a fan of that, all being under the same umbrella. When I look at what they're trying to do, make their own marketplace, have their own grading going through them with, uh, was it CSG? Sorry, guys, I had to grab some water here. My throat was getting a little dry. And then they're also producing, selling direct everything to consumer, minus whoever's underneath the Fanatics elbow for shop, uh, umbrella for shops and stuff. I just picture it. Hopefully it works out. But I'm just not a fan of having it all there. I can understand, like, if you were Collector's Universe and you bought all these companies underneath your umbrella, kind of in a way. But I can also see where this here, you know, you're keeping everything only underneath your umbrella. Nobody else has grounds to come in. It's going to be very, very, I guess you could say, inventive in a way to try to get other autographs and suits and McDonald's classic jerseys and stuff out there. It will definitely be different. Uh, I'm wondering if they're going to do have their own vault. I'm sure they probably will. They might already be in talks of it. I don't really follow it much. You know, with, like, the vault, if you look, I know Golden doesn't really have a vault type deal, but if you're, like, to put up a big card and they're estimating you're going to get this amount, I know, like, if I were, like, oh, well, I need to get something done or I need this amount of money, I think you can get up to, like, 30 40% of that value advanced ahead. I know PWCC, if you vault it, I don't know if it's like 50% vault value and stuff like that, but you could take out against uh, your cards in the vault. Hopefully they don't decline because I'm sure if it starts hitting some crazy number, there's going to be some some kind of uh, small fine print that they take over your vault. But lots to consider with it. Uh, I'm really hoping they get it right. I still think that we're not going to be set at a median now, probably till the end of next year. I think some things have medianed out to where, you know, we're back at that stable where we think it's going to be at level. Some things still below it more room to fall. But there's areas like box prices that are still way up there. It makes no sense to buy a box unless you hit something good out of it. But when you're looking at a 12-box case and maybe two boxes will pay for themselves plus, the other 10, you can't even really grade out unless you hurry up and pay the premium to try to make your money back. So hopefully that kind of stuff is more regulated and controlled. We'll find out. At least we still got Upper Deck out there doing their stuff. Um, Futera Soccer will still be out there. If you guys are a fan of the Leaf cards, Leaf will still be doing their stuff. I'm trying to think who else was still left out there. That might be about it between the companies I can think of. I, I know there's one that I'm missing. It's just a wild card. Wild card will still be out there. I knew there was one more wild card. But maybe eventually they all get gobbled up underneath one big umbrella. The part that I'm really, you know, hoping doesn't happen is that they falter at Fanatics with all this by acquiring all this, spending all this money, and, you know, you got to somehow show your investors now that there's a profit. I know they didn't get getting money from their investors for a Panini deal. At least that was my uh, understanding from what I heard and read. But you got to show your investors that you're going to make profit. So does that mean we're going to push out more product? Does that mean it's going to be priced, you know, a little bit less, but where they're not selling it cheap to a distributor and then they knock it up a little bit for us and then we knock it up to Dave and Adams and blow out prices? I don't know. It will be something we will have to see in the future. Again, I'm not really a fan of, you know, owning it all. It's like collecting all the Pokemons. you got to have them all type deal. I, I think competition is what sets a lot of this stuff up. And if you kill the competition, 
i.e. WWE, think about it. They bought up all their competition. This man did it. He bought WCW, bought ECW. He bought all those territories back in the day. He was the only one out there until, I mean, we still like Ring of Honor and all the indies out there. But it really dried up a lot of stuff up there. And by doing it, what was it, about five years it took? Because we had Jeff Jarrett's dad and him do one thing, and then they went into TNA, uh, total nonstop action. Now we got AEW and stuff. Now there's room for competition. When you have competition, it, it kind of gives a story out there, whether it's, you know, with cards or wrestling, but it drives people's interest in I'm a firm believer you need competition to help drive either a market or whatever you want to call it out there. That's just my thoughts on it. I wanted to wait a day to see what everybody else was thinking and throw out what I had on to it. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the video again. Crispy Cracker, uh, congrats on week one win. Hit Joey. I'll put the link in the description. You'll find a video on his channel. Just hit him up. He's just probably going to verify your email with me because he can't see people's emails since I'm the one that set the whole thing up. We'll look forward to see how the Nationals turn and play in the next three years. Again, if you're in Louisville this weekend, stop by. Say hello at the show. Don't worry, I won't put you on camera unless you want to come on camera. I don't really tape a whole lot in here. Most of my camera is going for security purposes just in case somebody walks by and tries to snag something. Uh... Judge stuff we hit and fanatics buying top or buying panini rumors out there. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. Oh, real quick, trade night. I know I have. I'm gonna do a video probably tomorrow on this, but if I don't get more interest sparked in it, we're just gonna nix it on Saturday. I know a couple people said they might be able to do it. Some people are saying they can't do the event from their phone. I'm gonna show everybody how to do it from their phone and video tomorrow though. All right, guys, that's it. Didn't realize I've been uh, talking this long, but a little bit of a uh, bunch of different topics I wanted to hit today instead of doing a bunch of videos. But all right, guys, have a good one. Stay safe out there. See you next video.